and then I was a big comic book writer, yeah. apparently, and, and so my <laughs> agent said, what do you want to do next? And I said, well, if I'm going to be a comic book writer, I want to do the greatest comic book of all time. Uh, I want to do Watchmen. And they said, no, 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 you never get that made. The rights right. are, well, you know, the rights are all messed up, and nobody would ever make that movie. And I sure. said, well, why don't you find it anyways, and <laughs> so, Figure it out. stop telling me what I can't do. And, <laughs> But they were kind of right. It took nine years, and right. it took a long time, and it was a huge, uh, it was a very difficult process sure. getting it made. But um, it was something that I really loved and, and felt uh, would make a, a great movie, and, and, right. um, and we eventually got it made. Yeah, so. and I don't want to dip too much into X-Men, just because there is another panel uh, this weekend, so you guys can make sure you check yeah, that out. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. I'm on some panel about X-Men with other yeah, people. Like, Are they comic book writers? I, I, I think so. <laughs> okay. Something like that. I'm, not sure. I'm very excited to you see what I'll say. You guys know these people? Yeah. I, yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. with voice acting, how did you get started into that? What was your um, initial uh, inspiration to want to even do that? Uh, in 1985, my family moved to Japan, and I went to high school there. And when I was 16, a Japanese video game company came to our school. It was an international school, and um, so everybody spoke English uh, to varying degrees of success. And, they, and the, the company said, we need four young men who speak English to do video game voices. And um, and so I, I was one of them, and we went down, and we just, I, I don't even know what games they were, but they were like for the earliest sort of arcade sure. games, and, um, and it was really fun. And so I did that, and then I started doing like English language voice tapes, and I had been an actor. I started doing uh, stage work when I was nine, so, oh, okay. so I kind of had a developed voice. Yeah. And, um, how to project properly. And yeah, exactly. Like well, I just had some sort of control over, over my instrument. <laughs> and um, and uh, I, my parents were always doing like funny accents around the house. Okay. And so I would do, you know, different accents and stuff like that. So it just seemed to be kind of a natural fit. For sure. Now, with uh, do you, what game company actually came to your high school? I have no idea. Oh, it was, okay. It was all a blur. It was sure. just, it was literally just these Japanese guys and said, we need four high school boys to come to our creepy studio and, and we were like, we're like, we're, we're in, you know, this is, this is something that could never go wrong and, and um, so we went down, it was this weird studio and they'd be like, you know, say this and we'd say, okay, I mean, maybe it wasn't even a video game right. thing, <laughs> God knows what it was. That's but, what it uh, started though, that's, that's where how, it started. That's what they told nice. us. So, being out in Japan, how did you, what made your family go out there originally and... Uh, my dad uh, worked for a big biotech company called Abbott uh, okay. Laboratories and uh, they would move us around all the time. Sure. Uh, like, I lived all over the states and Canada and then uh, in 1985 they said, you're going to Japan and so we, I said, well, have a good time. <laughs> um, but my parents said, no, you're coming with us and I was right. like, uh, <laughs> so, um, with the development of your screenwriting and things like that, um, what got you into screen? Were you more or less you wanted to be out of the actor side of it, or did you want to do more of the creative side? What was the inspiration for that? Um, I had well, I'd always written like since I was twelve years old. I'd always written like stories, short stories, and tried to write books and and this and that, and then in 1997 I produced and starred in a little movie called Burn, which none of you have seen, but, um, <laughs> but I did some of the work on the script there. And I learned, as a producer, uh, that you have a little more control over your life than as an actor. Absolutely. Um, so I really, you know, I love that part of it, but I really kind of just lucked into uh, working on the movie X-Men uh, uh, and, and being asked to rewrite some of the scenes. and. Sure. and um, fortunately, I'd had that experience working on it before, but no, I, had, I didn't have any <laughs> didn't have a desire to stop being an actor. That was more more uh, the public's desire. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> they, they, so, but they were it, sort of hoping, you know, why, why don't you be a writer? And I was like, oh, okay. Okay, Seems sure. Rude. Right. <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah, sure. thanks. Um, so, with uh, you know the original X Men movie and all that, what um. <laughs> 
Continue. <laughs> I can hear you. I didn't realize what was happening. That's I was kind of thrown off. I know, right? That's all right. David Hayter has that effect on people. That's right. <laughs> um, no, with the original... You didn't know I meant, like, security? <laughs> you got what's going Broom on? Broom that guy. <laughs> 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 um, but with uh, X-Men and stuff, what kind of background did you have that allowed you to be able to get into that large? And now, obviously, it wasn't as big at the time, yeah. but coming into that, uh, they obviously saw some kind of potential, but they saw potential in you. How did you get contacted to be able to screenwrite for that as well? <laughs> well, um... I mean, I've told this story many, many times, so I apologize if you've heard it before, but I, uh, the little movie I made, Burn, was um, executive produced by my friend Brian Singer. So Brian, uh, and the movie didn't sell, so then I was broke, so Brian gave me a job answering the phones on X-Men. And then he was like, this is horrible, my, the script is gonna ruin my career, and I, you know, nobody understands what X-Men are, and this is just, crap and and so I had read I had been a huge X-Men fan of, of the comics I used to play I was always Cyclops and and uh, yeah right, thank you <laughs> he gets it he gets it uh, this guy gets it um, so uh, so I suggest and I had put together this little movie with Brian so I said well look well, why don't you have a scene where Wolverine meets Cyclops, and they say this, and they say this, and that'll solve some of your problems. Sure. And he said, yeah, go write that for me. So nice. it, it wasn't so much that anyone saw potential in me, it was that Brian saw an opportunity to have somebody, like a slave, <laughs> who would work for free, who understood the comic book, who would just write whatever he wanted, and that's what I did. And, then, <laughs> um, and I, uh, along the way, I proved useful enough that that I kept doing it for 13 months. Sure. Rewrote the script so much that I ended up getting sole credit. So that was my first writing job. I mean, it was a freaky, uh, like lightning bolt of opportunity, and and um, uh, I just literally fell right ass backwards right. into it. Right. No, that's excellent. Though. Yeah. Sometimes the best jobs happen like that. That uh, well, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with. Uh, you know, obviously with the production side and stuff like that, you enjoy that. Yeah. Are, do you have any plans in the future uh, for more movies and things like that that you want to continue with? Yeah, I have. Uh, well, I'm, I'm writing and producing, co-producing this show, uh, Warrior Nun, uh, at Netflix right now. Uh, it's going to shoot in Spain in, in uh, the spring. And uh, I have a movie I just co-wrote with Joseph O'Brien uh, that... Uh, we're trying to get set up for me to direct. Okay. Um, I, yeah, and then other various screenwriting sure. jobs and yeah, because there's like always that. something on the back burner going. Yeah, well, there's so much content now that that being a a, a, a relatively well-known screenwriter is is it's not a bit bad place to be. No, and, absolutely. You know, so right. Um, so I guess we'll get into uh, some of the Metal Gear if that's cool. Of course. Um, but uh, my personal question for you was, uh, out of all the Metal Gears, uh, what is your favorite, what was your favorite game out of all of them? I think Snake Eater. Yeah. Uh, I, I love them all, and they're all, as you know, they're all unique, and they're all, they were all groundbreaking and, and really remarkable. Um, Achievements and uh, but Snake Eater, I, I mean, it, it's sort of, and I think this sort of dovetails with the fans that I speak to. Snake Eater and the first one, the, the Shadow Moses uh, PlayStation One game, uh, are the two favorites, and they both just came together so beautifully. Like the 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 movie of it, the experience of it, the gameplay, all all of that, it feels like it's of a of a piece. And both of those games feel unique. Yes. From each other, Absolutely. so, um, but but yeah, Snake Eater really kicks ass. Yeah, that was actually the first one I beat. Um, that was the, I feel bad. I feel bad. I'm sorry, guys. That was the first one I played, and was uh, way later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> boo, boo me. I get it, but I love it now, so it's all good. Does, would anyone else like to moderate or? <laughs> no, I'm sure. All I'm the hands kidding. Are going. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
How did you uh, come into the voice acting for Snake? How did that? Uh, how did Kojima find you, or if it was Kojima at all? Or? No, I, I. Well, I had done Captain Planet, um, right. and so I knew the. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> A big fan of my, my guest star cameo as the Russian brother of the Russian Planeteer. <laughs> That's a hardcore fan. Uh, but that was cast by a woman named Chris Zimmerman, who ended up directing all the English language voice oh, okay. uh, versions of the Metal Gear games. So she called me into audition. Um, I think I got the part because Kojima knew uh, this movie I was in called Guyver. Dark Hero from okay. 1993. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a strange career. <laughs> and uh, so, because he sent me a, a Giver thing to, so, okay. a Giver poster to sign us oh, on my first day of work. So, nice. there you so go. I was like, oh, I think that's why he, he hired me. But um, hey, however it works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I just auditioned for it, and and um, uh, I actually, if you check my Twitter, uh, just not too long ago. In the last few weeks or so, I wrote a whole essay about how I auditioned for it, and oh, how really? I got the part, and where I was at in my life, and how it sort of changed my life. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I know I've got a bunch of questions, but uh, at the end of the day, the fans definitely. Uh, if you don't mind, we can open up the floor a little bit of for them. Um, yeah, if you guys want to go ahead, like I said at the beginning, uh, go ahead and line up, and we'll get to you as we can. That would be excellent. Uh, well, while, while they're doing that. Um, with the with the Netflix series, what is that? Uh, what's that going to entail? What's that about? Uh, it's called Warrior Nun, N U N. Uh, it's based on a, a graphic novel series uh, by a guy named Ben Dunn. Okay. And uh, Warrior Nun Ariella. Yeah. Ben Dunn. Doing um, your homework over there. That's right. And uh, that's not a great seat you're in. <laughs> hey. Can you see us? Hey. Uh, there are empty chairs. Um, it's probably better to hear me than to see me. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, it's just a kick-ass like action comic book uh, type show, but nice. um, yeah, but it's my first time working in a writer's room, and I'm working with all these brilliant writers, and and uh, uh, and it's been really really fun, and we're putting together something you know pretty smart and no, that's cool. Excellent. Yeah. It's always nice to have those ideas to be able to bounce off like other people instead of. It's getting, really cool. Yeah, it's better to be the dumbest person in the room than the smartest. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, you, you at least want to be somewhere in the middle. Right, at least in the middle. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't ever want to be, you don't ever want to be in the room looking around going, I wonder who the dumbest one is. <laughs> oh, it's me. <laughs> so. We'll go ahead. What's going on, man? Uh, I've been waiting a long time to say this, but uh, oh, hotness, I want to bang you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, hotness, I want to bang you. <laughs> Uh, that's from Metal Gear Awesome. It's not. It's not a private uh, relationship <laughs> thing with me and this tall gentleman. But, um, I've had this nothing. theory for a while. I know that you do more of a writing thing, but uh, for a Metal Gear movie, I've always had this like vision of how to get it set up. <coughs> W.S. Anderson, you know, Mila Jovovich's husband, has always done video game movies, and if you can keep them only doing the first one. Uh, everything else, you know, don't have them do any sequels. I think that would be a good way to get it started. I, I don't know if you do a GoFundMe, but I do have a dollar in my pocket to get started. Uh, if we could do go down that route, I mean, I could give it to you right now. Oh, uh, well, I, uh, yeah, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> just set up a basket. No, 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 no. no I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like church um, in, in that you'll get nothing for it. Uh, Sorry, it's a little dig at church. Um, <laughs> first of all, I think his name is Paul Thomas Anderson. Is it? Okay. Yeah, uh, not the Paul Thomas Anderson. He's the other Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay. Um, second of all, it's already got a director named Jordan Vogt Roberts, who's uh, a very big director who did uh, Kong Skull Island. So Ooh. it's, yeah, yeah, no, a big, big director. I've been talking to him on Twitter about it. He's a huge fan of Metal Gear, and hopefully that means the movie will be good. <laughs> Dollar not needed. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm, uh, I tried talking to you. I, I'm just, I've always like, I've always admired you as both like an actor and a screenwriter. I tried talking to you before at the, uh, at your booth, but I just kind of clammed up at that point. I recall. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sorry. it's nice to speak to you. No, it's all right. Just, uh, People get surprisingly nervous around me, which is really not necessary. <laughs> I, I, I love you all, and, and you're, we're all just people hanging out, so. Well, it's just, I've always like, 
I've always looked up to you in terms of like both screenwriting and acting. Thank you. And uh, thank you. I have a, I have about two, I have two questions if that's all right. Uh, sure. Uh, first question is, I remember a rumor around like the first MGS game that I've heard around, but somebody said the reason you uh, sounded different in the first game compared to the others was that uh, you were recovering from a cold. That's, no. Right. I, I was saying, I, I never believed that, but... That's, that's just weird. That's just, uh, <laughs> the second question, uh... I think the second time I recorded for Twin Snakes, I just forgot what I sounded like and uh, got raspier. It's yeah. my fault. It's, it's just, my it's stupidity. Just, it wasn't my lungs. It's just become, it's just become progressively, uh, uh, raspier. Yeah, well, as I get older, God. <laughs> You're just gonna sound like that when you're 70. That's right. Where's my pudding? <laughs> That's it. Oh my God. And the uh, second question uh, is, yeah. the second question is kind of elaborating on the earlier, what was your like, favorite yeah, one to work on? Uh, what was your opinion on the... Uh, sorry, give me a second. No, no, this is a lot like our earlier conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, was your, what was your opinion on the uh, fact that the script writer between the first game and subsequent games actually changed so uh, a lot of the dialogue's a bit more stilted in the uh... Oh yeah, well yeah, so the, the well I don't know about the screen, well I guess it was a screenwriter, I mean uh, Jeremy Blaustein, is that yeah. who you mean? Yeah, so Jeremy, yeah, he was a, you know, brilliant uh, guy who, who spoke Japanese and, and English and um, did, he was there, uh, I, I don't really know how the scripts came together, um, but I do know that he got replaced after the first game, which is unfortunate. But it happens. No, I'm not. Um, I'm not saying like any of them are badly written or anything. It's just you can tell the first game's written by a different person than the subsequent. Right. Right. Well, again, you know, it's sort of like the voice. You know, you do you do the first game and you're kind of feeling your way through it, and then the world sort of deepens and gets weirder, yeah. and and uh, you know things things you have you know you're you're forced to write about new stuff. And in the Metal Gear world, that means it can get weird, and and um, it's so, Metal Gear. Right. yeah. But I yeah, I really don't know what the story was behind the, the writer changes and things like it's that. It's just there was a there was a lot of people like online talking about how like after the first game, the writing became a lot more like stilted and awkward because and they attributed that to one of the right Jeremy Blaustein having been replaced during the, uh, I the first game. I suppose it's. I mean, that's you know that's an objective. It's, it's possible, but subjective opinion. Yeah. It's, it's easy what, to throw a scapegoat on somebody when they're yeah. gone. I I see what they're talking about. It's just kind of, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, um, I pre sorry for taking like 20. Not at all. Yeah, it's thank just you. been a delight. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, it's been nice to talk to you. Yeah. Nice <laughs> to talk to you as well. Hello there. Hello, how are you? Doing good. Um, good. I was wondering, um, which Metal Gear would you say was the most difficult for you to work on? Uh, a four. Um, uh, because it's just a movie with some gameplay parts in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lot. I mean, there was a lot for me to do. It took us nine months to record. Um, also, in that game, if you don't know, Snake is is aging rapidly, and so I wanted him to be kind of falling apart. But I also wanted him to progressively get worse, and by the end, barely be able to communicate. And the problem was that we recorded it out of order. So over nine months, so we get a scene and I'd say, okay, what percentage of the game are we in here? And they'd have to find out like you're 55% of the way through. So I'd be like, okay, so I'm at this point. I'm not at this point, you know? And so A, it was very hard on the voice and B, it was, it was sort of difficult to maintain that steady decline, but, uh, but that was my goal anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, they also made me barf on the uh, on Metal Gear Three. Uh, yeah, because they, you know, I don't know if you remember in Metal Gear Three, on the health screen you could spin them around, yep. Yep. and you'd come back to real life and he'd throw up. So they're like, oh, we need a bunch of barf sounds, and I always record after lunch because I write in the mornings. So I'd gone to Carl's Jr., which is this terrible. <laughs> so I guess you know it. Um, and uh, and they were like, you know, they were like, you need to make barf sound, like, <laughs> and then it was like, bah! you know, and I barfed all over some, you know, two thousand dollar microphone. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't uh, that wasn't a highlight. <laughs> What's that? It, it was for the it, it, immersion is the right word. Yeah. yeah. 
sir. Uh, so I had a question on how did it feel to be able to come back as the voice of Solid Snake for Super Bomberman R and Smash Brothers Ultimate? Pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was cool. You know, I talked to Konami and I said, look, you guys own this character and every time I do the voice, people seem to be pretty happy, so... <laughs> Um, so we said, you know, let's try out some stuff. Uh, so Bomberman, um, you know, it was just this little cameo I did uh, for Bomberman, and but I didn't know when, before I did the session, they wanted me to do both young Solid Snake and sort of middle-aged Big Boss. And so it was kind of cool that I got to do, you know, young Solid Snake and Big Boss. And it's, you know, people... I don't think people, real, unless you're totally obsessive, really know that it's, you know, they're kind of different. It's still still me, but, um, so it was really cool to, to go back and do that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> so, I already talked to you a bunch earlier, so I won't waste a bunch of your time. That's all but right. Considering my odd request earlier, I actually just wanted to ask, what is the oddest fan request you've ever gotten? Uh, I had a guy once ask me to sign his prosthetic leg, and it was you. And I did. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the oddest request I ever got, but it was pretty it was pretty cool. So. Congratulations! I will wear that crown regardless. <laughs> there you go, sir. Hey. As someone who um, greatly appreciates your, your screenplays for Watchmen and X-Men, especially considering how complicated that they must be, especially <laughs> when you have to navigate through so much and kind of get so many things right, yeah. uh, what would you recommend for kind of getting that first screenplay out and for getting people's eyes on it so that you could get some attention from other people? Sure. Um... Well, the, the simple answer is, I, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I, I, I answered the phones on it. I mean, I was friends with a big director, so that was helpful. Um, I mean, to be less glib about it, I was in Hollywood. Uh, I knew I was friends with a bunch of creative people, and many of them became famous and important, and that sort of lifted all of us up. Um, so that's helpful. But if you can't do that... Um, I think the best way to do it, it's very, very hard to get people to, to look at your stuff if you don't have an agent, if you've never done anything, if you don't have any credits. Uh, but a really cool way to go about it is to send your screenplays to screenplay competitions at film festivals. They're all over the world. They're happening all the time. There's thousands of them. And if there's a screenplay competition and you send in your screenplay and you win an award, well, you're an award-winning screenwriter. And if you can win a few awards, you're a multi-award winning screenwriter. And you can start to, you know, there's a much lower barrier to entry for those things. I mean, there's, there's really no barrier. They just have to kind of like them. They have to have some, some modicum of talent. And um, so that's a good way to do it. And I was actually just contacted by a writing team, these two women, and, and they said, um, we really want to sit down with you and talk to you as a producer. And we are award winning screenwriters you know, we won this award at such and such festival and this award at such and such festival. And I was like, oh, see, it did the thing. And um, uh, so, that's, so that's a good way to do it. Um, but it is really hard. And, and you know, agents don't t typically tend to take uh, blind submissions or anything like that. Um, or you uh, reach out to people like me, but not me, um, <laughs> to try to take a look at your stuff. But again, it's, you know, it's legally dicey for me to look at other people's screen plays as well if you don't have a lawyer, if you don't have an agent. Um, so uh, that's my best advice. Just keep, keep doing it keep, and keep writing on your own to keep getting better and better and better. Read all the books, read other people's screenplay, read great screenplays, figure out why they're great, uh, and then um, try to win some awards and just, just hammer away at it. Thank you. Sure. You can applaud, sure. That was great. <laughs> Sir. Hi there. Hey. Uh, first things first. What are your opinions on Kaz's Burgers? Kaz's Burgers. Um, he, he feels the key is artificial ingredients. Yeah. 
So that's weird. I, uh, we had this question on Twitter, too. I had a couple people uh, tweet at me to ask you this, so I'm glad this got brought up. I don't even, I, I don't even remember, like, was I involved with Kaz's Burgers back when we did Peace Walker? Because I don't recall. No, they were pretty tasty. No, that was, did uh, I think they were tasty? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know, Robin Atkin Downs, who, who plays Kaz, contacted me the other day, and he said, boy, you know, I mentioned Metal Gear on my Twitter, and people really responded, and I was like, yes. yeah, I know. <laughs> I am familiar with that phenomenon, and he was like, well, we should do something, and I was like, well, do we have this? <laughs> and um, anyway, so he was like, yeah, we should do a thing, Snake, we should do a thing about the burgers, and uh, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but, um, <laughs> but I Googled it, and there it was, and I said, okay, there's a thing about his burgers, so uh, we did the little Periscope thing, uh, Q&A the other day, and I brought burgers, and there we were. So they were, to answer your question, they were delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on. Uh, Pardon me. Sorry. But, no, take your time. No, no. Uh, uh, I plan to live forever. Oh, well then, I'm, yeah. Take it time. Uh, you look awesome. Oh, thank you. What's your costume? Uh, Prince Peach. Oh, nice. My nice. wife is female Mario, so Mary Ann, I guess. Nice. No? Nice. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for coming, by the way. Oh, my thank pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no Rock on, Michigan. Woo! Beer City. Yeah. I was trying to think, uh, possibly a strange head scratcher question. I think I got one. Okay. Um, what classic uh, movie role character uh, do you think Solid Snake would uh, play well, or what line from a classic movie that you like would you uh, would you most like to have Solid Snake say? <laughs> okay, I think I succeeded. You're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> Hey, good, thanks. How are you? Um, so you said you got your start theatrically, doing yeah. stage stuff. Um, Correct. Just kind of curious, because I, I do that myself. Uh -huh. uh, what was your favorite uh, stage role you ever did, and why? <laughs> uh, oh, what was my favorite stage role? I, um, so I was trained as a Shakespearean actor, you know, in Canada, I went to theater school in Toronto, and um, basically, as an actor there, the goal is to work at the Stratford Festival, and, and so you do a lot of Shakespeare, and you do a lot of voice training, and you learn to project and become Ian McKellen, and that's the goal, Bill Brown. Um, and so, uh, so when I went to Hollywood, I was like, you know, screw this, I'm gonna go be in the movies and it's gonna be awesome. Um, but while I was waiting to be in the movies, I was like, I kinda missed Shakespeare. So I auditioned, uh, so I saw that there was a, in Pasadena they were doing a production of Richard III. And I was like, ah, oh, these Americans, they don't know anything about Shakespeare. I'll, I'll go down, I'll, I'll just pick a part. Uh, I was so arrogant. I said, I'll just pick a part and go down, read for it, get it, and then I'll just do that. And I didn't want anything too onerous. So in Richard III, um, there's a character called the Duke of Clarence, right? And in the first act, he's, he's been captured by Richard, he's in prison, he has this horrible nightmare, and he wakes up and he gives this amazing monologue about the nightmare, and then two killers come in, he has a great scene with the killers, and then they murder him. And I was like, that's perfect, I'll do that, I'll get murdered, I'll go home, I'll, I'll be home in time for The Simpsons, right? <laughs> was very important to me at the time. Uh, it still is, really. And uh, so, I, so, I, so that's what I did. It was, it was so arrogant. I went down, auditioned for it. Guy was like, you're amazing. I'm like, I, I know. And uh, so he cast me. He gives me Duke of Clarence. But I never bothered to read the rest of the play. And apparently, all of the people, spoiler alert, at the end of Richard III that Richard has murdered come back soaked in blood. <laughs> for one nightmare scene saying despair and die, despair and die, right? So I, so every night I would drive to Pasadena, which was like half an hour away, 
do my big monologue, sit backstage for like two hours, and then get soaked in Cairo's sticky corn syrup, blood, and then blurch out and go despair and die. <laughs> so the lesson is, always read the rest of the play. <laughs> and that's my story. That's funny, uh, I work with a, uh, we have a local Shakespeare company here too. And, oh, cool. Uh, I was Edward IV, so. Oh, oh yeah. bro. Hey, there you go. Blood relation. What's up, Link? 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 Yeah. yeah. What's happening? Oh, good. Just chilling? Good. Yeah. So next month, Smash Ultimate comes out. This will be my first Smash game where I play as well. Oh, awesome. It's showtime. Woo! I'm really got into it for the Wii U one, and I'm glad that you're coming back. Yeah, thank you. I've heard that you don't like your character's butt size. Yeah. That's accurate. That's accurate. Um, for those of you who don't know, Snake typically has this very, you know, well-formed apple around the back. And uh, then, then for this new Smash Brothers Ultimate, they, they released an image of the character and his butt is like literally concave. Like this... <laughs> Like somebody has scooped it out with an ice cream scooper or something. And, uh, and people are like, well, it's probably not that big a deal. And I'm like, it is a very big deal. Why aren't you people more upset about this? So I started a hashtag, you know, save snakes butt. And uh, so, no, I, I, I mean, look, I'm not going to go on strike about it or anything like that. I, uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but hopefully it was... Hopefully it was a programming mistake. I'm hoping he will, you know, be fully butted by the time we... The day one patch, he'll be good. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I blow it up. Uh, I, I don't know what the current state of his gluteal cleft is, um, but I'm hoping that it's uh, uh, robust. Yes. Who would I want to voice? Verse, as, as Snake, who would you want to Oh, Verse. Oh, I see. Who, uh, who would I want to fight? Uh, Sam Fisher? That guy's, that guy's been asking for it. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Um, first things first. Yes. On Reddit yesterday, they did post that Snake's butt is back. Oh, thank you. Confirmed. Thank you. Is that right? Confirmed. Oh, good, good. I have been waiting for that. I, Your hashtag saved it. Uh, well, I hope so. I like to. I you know you like to think that you can make a difference in this dark world. And I finally accomplished something worthwhile. I've re-rounded my imaginary butt. When you were in the voice box for Metal Gear Solid 2, did you have any idea what was going on with the plot at the time? No. No, I, um, you know, the thing is, uh, the scripts for Metal Gear got so huge right. that, I mean, the first script was probably about this tall, a stack of papers this tall. I don't know how many thousands of pages Metal Gear 4 was, but, but Metal Gear 2 would have been a few thousand pages and they don't give it to me in advance. So literally, when you're hearing me say it, I, I'm, most of the time I'm reading it for the first time. Um, so no, I had no idea what was going on. Nobody told me that Raiden was going to be taking over as the player character. Yes. So that was a bit of a conversation. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Like, why is this girly man, you know, <laughs> that there's anything wrong with girly. <laughs> what's that? If it makes you feel better, we didn't know either. Yeah, no, well, nobody did. And, and uh, except for Kojima. And yep, so, Kojima. um, they said, oh, you're, you, you know, you're going to be advising the player character. And I was like, I sure that's gonna work but all right um but as far as understanding it i you know look i'm i'm in the same boat as you are i obviously i spent a lot of time you know reading 
Metal Gear related things and, and being involved with it. So I have a relative grasp of the whole canon, but there's, you know, uh, that one's the weirdest. I mean, that one, I, who, who knows? Who knows what's Still going on? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank Forever. You. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Um, so, Guyver 2. Yeah. Uh, what was that experience like? And if they decided to do like a Guyver 20 years later, would you do it? Yeah, so, yeah, Guyver 2 was this movie I did in 1993. It was based on an anime. It was awesome. I mean, I figured that was my big break. In fact, I, I quit my bartending job. I blew all the money I made on it on a new car because I figured, well, I'm a movie star now. <laughs> this is never gonna go wrong um, and uh, so <laughs> that's all true and um, and so basically it was me and then all of the young people who were in the movie it was all like those students and, and the other actors and stuff uh, they had built this huge cave set and this and the spaceship and everything in a, in a warehouse in Van Nuys uh, and we shot on, on there and that was really cool and then we went up to the Angeles Crest forest and we shot on location for like two months. And it was like, it was like being Batman or something. You know, I, I, I was a superhero in the lead role in my own movie. And I mean, you know, I was 23 years, I didn't know it wasn't gonna do anything for me or, you know, or that that was the last money I'd make for, you know, two years or whatever. That I, I didn't know that I would be, you know, back bartending again within a year, but, uh, it was really, really fun, and um, uh, met my wife on that movie, and, and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that is sweet. It was sweet. Well, not only that, but I had a rule, and I think, I think you'll see that I was fairly forward-thinking. I was like, do not date anyone on this film, or on any film. Don't. You know, don't date somebody and then break up with them and then let it ruin the whole thing. Well, you stuck with it. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. And so, no, I had a rule, like, don't date anyone. And, you know, my, and, and my wife and I were flirting and, like, she clearly liked me and I liked her, but I, was, but I would not ask her out. And then on her last day... Uh, on the call sheet, I said, so, you know, you want to get some dinner sometime? And she, so this is sort of a fun story. So she had put down in her daytimer, uh, things, under things to do, snag the Giver. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and then on her last day, I asked her out, and she went home, and she was like, check. <laughs> Did she show it to you afterwards? She, uh, she never showed it to me, but she told me. <laughs> she awesome. told me the story, and I just uh, and I just bought her a four thousand square foot house in California. So, uh, yeah. you know, goals, goals. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah. So, uh, so it was really, really fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was an amazing thing. So, uh, and would I? Oh, would I come back? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would. <laughs> um, I've spoken to to Steve Wang about it. In fact. I've, I've had talks about it in the past couple months with producers, with Steve Wang, and I said, you know, maybe I could be like Luke Skywalker, Guyver, you know, get some kid, he's, he's the new Guyver, and I come in as the mentor that he doesn't listen to, and, and, um, and it would be pretty kick-ass. I, I think the, the question is, w would anybody, you know, pay to see it, and is it worth putting up the, the amount of money it would take to, to do it? Um, so those are questions that are out of my control, unless I keep talking about it in front of hundreds of thousands of people, <laughs> which I'm doing now. Um, you have me and my husband's tickets. So awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I would love to do it again. It was just one of the greatest times I ever had in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey. Hey. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, you know, just chilling. Sorry. What are you up to? I'm here. Nice. Um, first off, just thank you for everything. Sure. Um, your performance of Solid Snake pretty much led me to join the military. Oh, God. Please. Back here. You know, I get that a lot. And that's, and that's fine. Just don't 
get anything blown off of you or anything. Well, let me tell you, when recruiters are damn liars anyways, and you end up doing some shit that ain't solid saying. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I get, I get so many people. Or I went to D.C., and there's just so many soldiers, and, like, some of them are, are, are Special Forces guys, and they're like, yeah, and I, I love it, and, you know, it's great. But some of them are just, you know, guys who went in and they're like, oh, this isn't Solid Snake. And, and I have to tell you, this is a secret. I, I, I haven't told anybody this. I'm not actually a soldier. Like, I'm sitting in a very comfortable, you know, Hollywood sound studio with, like, donuts and things. There's no real danger. So, anyway, uh, you know, I appreciate... I, I, Okay, well, I appreciate your service, and I appreciate everybody who, 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 who does uh, sign up, but please be well, careful. And well, don't, we all you know. appreciate yours probably a little bit more. Thank uh, you. All, all the gamers I've, I've seen and come across in the military is outstanding. Yeah, yeah, just, cool. It's, uh, the amount of playthrough I've done, marathons of Metal Gear, just to get me through the bullshit. Oh, good. <laughs> for well, the most good. part, but uh, I, I guess my question is, are you still in cahoots with old Kojima, or what's going on? <laughs> no, old Kojima no. and I. No, we, done, we done took different paths, my friend. Yeah, the them trails, them trails separated, you know, a while, a while back. All right, then that's all I got. But I love Kojima. I'm going to use that. In the <laughs> oh, he day oh. Hey, Dave. Hello. Hello, Paige. How are you? Oh my gosh. I know your name. <laughs> I, dun, dun, dun. I know all your names. <laughs> He's like Santa Claus, only for video games. That's right. And you've all been naughty. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, like him, uh, we commend your performance on all the Metal Gears, all the performances Thank you've you. done. You're a tremendous voice actor. But my question is, hopefully to steer away from Metal Gear a little bit, because I'm sure you grow tired of it sometimes. Mm, it's all right. It's okay. Um, what is your dream project? I know Watchmen was a big one for you, you're saying, but if you could do another one, or maybe do it again, whatever whether it be acting, writing, directing, all of the above? Yeah, well, I have some, uh, but it's difficult for me to say anything because if I say anything, somebody else snaps up the rights or, like, it's, it's a little frustrating because there are things that I would really love to do and there are pieces I really love uh, that I'd love to adapt, but it really complicates my world if I say anything, which I know sounds Hollywoody and no, weird, sorry, but no, 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 don't be sorry. It's just, I'm sorry, because it's not a very satisfying answer, but there are, I mean, you know, basically what I'll say is if you guys as, as you know, you're all fan, members of various fandoms and you look at, um, like if you were in my position, the books you've read that have never been adapted, the comic books that you've loved that have never been adapted, you know, take the top three that burn in your heart, and then that's how I feel about certain titles. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I really can't can't say anything because it really messes things up. You're totally fine. I'm sorry. Can I ask? A, uh, yes, you? shoot. Yeah. So your buddies with Brian Singer, right? Well, buddies is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I I haven't seen it yet. I've just been really, really busy. Um, uh, I really want to see it. I was a huge Queen fan. In fact, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, Brian Singer and I were in Toronto shooting X-Men. And we were in a comic book shop on Queen Street. Um, and the comic book shop owner recognized Brian and said, hey, you're Brian Singer. And he was like, that's true. And, 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 um, and then he was a big fan. And he said, this is David. He's writing the movie. He's writing X-Men with us. And the comic book shop owner is geeking out, like just geeking out over us. And we're like, yeah, we're, we're pretty cool. Um, uh, and in the corner is this guy. And he's sort of perusing the comics. And he's got this huge head of curly hair. No. Yeah. And as we're sort of playing the big stars for this guy, I look over and I'm like, Brian, I think that's Brian May. And it was Brian May, the lead guitarist for Queen. Oh yeah. And Brian and I fell apart like the most ridiculous fanboys. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so, like, everything you do is amazing and you're amazing. And, and he came over and he was super cool. And so, um, so yeah, I was there when, when Brian Singer met Brian May the first time. And so that was pretty cool. 
Um, you know, as far as being buddies with Brian, Brian gave me my career. Um, he ha has uh, at times been a very good friend to me, but he's also, you know, can be a difficult person and has difficult things in his life. So, you know, yeah, well, yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's all relative. Um, so, uh, so it's a complicated relationship at best, but, uh, but I will always be grateful to him for giving me my career and uh, for being a, a hilarious person. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paige. <laughs> Sir, nice to see you. Back at you. <laughs> so I had two short questions. Great. One of which was, what was your favorite Metal Gear Solid boss throughout the series? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess I'm gonna say Sniper Wolf. Um, like, you know, there were crazier fights and there were flashier bosses, and there's a lot that I, there's a lot of them that I love, but. Tasia Valenza as Sniper Wolf, she's a good friend of mine, and, and her death scene was so incredible. And the, the scene, you know, Meryl getting shot and, and, being, and lying in the thing as a decoy and Snake really wanting to save her and not being able to do it. Just, it was so cinematic and so beautifully performed and so unique in terms of gaming. Uh, that one, I think, is probably my all-time favorite, but I would also say the sniper fight with the end was incredible and just this incredible sort of massive zen experience. Um, I love Metal Gear Ray versus Metal Gear Rex in PlayStation 4, or on, on Metal Gear 4, and um, there's a lot of them that were really, really amazing. Vulcan Raven was amazing, and Psycho Mantis, and uh, you, you know, there's almost too many, I mean, there are too many to really list, but that sniper wolf sequence really uh, affected me, you know, like emotionally. It was cool. Thanks. And Thank you. Second one was, if you could voice any other Metal Gear Solid character, who would it be? Um, Punish Snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy myself. <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't know. Okay, <laughs> Squirrel number three, as <laughs> voiced by David Hayter. That's right. I wouldn't look. I the point is, I wouldn't want to take anybody else's job. I, I, all those actors are so amazing, and um, just Kiefer, I would, I would take his job. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sir, Mark. Mr. Pliskin. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. How's it going? I'm sorry, I forgot your name too. Tell me your name again, kid. Justin. Nice. Mark, what's up? All right, so being the actor and the director and screenwriting and your major involvement in MGS, of course, Wait, you ever hoped or wanted to be approached the, for the films? Yeah. Or yeah, have I, they? Ha, no. Uh, <laughs> have they? No, I mean, I've been speaking to the director and, and you, might you know, he sort of wanted my support for publicity purposes. No. We haven't talked beyond that. Um, would I want to be approached? Yeah, working on any big movie is amazing in whatever capacity you're working on it. Um, so they don't have you in any involvement at all? Not, not at present, no. But, um, but uh, you know, people ask me, they're like, you know, shouldn't you play Snake in the movie? And I'm like, well, yeah, I should. <laughs> but nobody's gonna give them $200 million to, to do that. <laughs> Um, so, you know, you kind of got to be realistic about the whole thing. Actually, there's a great story. Um, so y'all know Nolan North? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Legend, legendary voice actor. And he, you know, he was the first Deadpool, um, you know, did the Deadpool video games. And he's amazing. Like, he's so talented. And they called him in. They were going to put together the Deadpool movie. And, they, and the producers called him in for a meeting. He was like, ah, oh, here we go. And they were like, look, we really want to talk to you about um, the character of Deadpool. And he was like, yeah. And uh, they said, can you think of anybody who would be good for this? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, per Nolan, he, he was like, he, he was like, I, I got to go. And he just got up and actor guilted them. But the point is, you know, they're, never, they're not going to hire us to, to do that. There's more movies you never know. 
Maybe we'll see. I think you know it's unlikely, but uh, but uh, never never stop stopping. I suppose. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned Christmas, and everyone's yeah. talking Metal Gear. Right. Have what? you ever heard about Merry Gear Salad, the Christmas parody of Metal Gear? I haven't. <laughs> and its sequel, featuring Otacon and Snake as I, Santa. No, I have never. Uh, that's a parody I have never heard of. Is it pretty good? Uh, yes, they're fan games. You can find them online. They've been available for years. Oh yeah. I just found out about this through a Metal Gear um, marathon from some call me Johnny. Okay. And yeah. What do, what do others call you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they're really fun. They're really short, quick bursts if you're like classic Metal Gear. Sweet. But I will yeah. check it out. And um, also, I heard of, I don't know if it's true or not, and I don't know how involved you were, like past screenwriting for Watchmen, but I also heard um, when filming that movie, they gave everyone copies of the comic book for like storyboards or something like that. Do you know anything about that or no? No, but I, I would assume that that's true. I mean, obviously, everybody who worked on Watchmen, it, it came out of the comic books. And actually, I kind of wished it was even closer in terms of storyboarding out of the comic books, because the amazing thing about that book is every word of dialogue is counterpointed by something going on in the frame. There's some ironic comment or illustration of what's being said in the dialogue that in the background or in the foreground is, is there's some visual comment on it. And that's what I really wanted the movie to be. And, and there's a lot of that in, in, in Zach's final movie, um, but there could have been more. And, and so, yeah, I, I, I would imagine that the, the book really served hugely as storyboards, mm -hmm. but I don't know for, for a fact. <laughs> I'm just speculating on a hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank Just you. Mostly wanted to reference Merrick yourself. Well, I, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> the season's coming up. It is. So with uh, you know, we were talking. You were talking about earlier just now uh, with the. You know, trying to stay as close to source material as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, with Watchmen, you know, it's already a long movie. Was there some stuff that was cut out that you actually wanted to hopefully keep in? Yeah. Well, we always knew. I mean, a full adaptation of it would be nearly four hours long, um, and you're not going to put that out. Uh, but I, but I love the ultimate cut. If any of you have seen the ultimate cut of Watchmen, like it cuts in the animated Tales of the Black Freighter, the comic book within the comic book. Um, it's got a lot more stuff. In fact, it's the only version I watch now, so I don't even remember what was in the first uh, theatrical version, and. Um, and no, is there, any, there, is there anything that's not in the ultimate cut that I would wish that was in there? Not that I can think of. I right. mean, really, my goal when I wrote the film was to take every badass moment in that comic book and make sure it was in the movie. Absolutely. And trim everything else that I could, which there wasn't much. Right. Um, but there's certain things that, you know, when you write a comic book, you have to sort of indicate things that you don't have to do in a movie because you just, the camera tells it to you. Exactly. Um, so no, no, I'm, nice. pretty, I'm pretty happy well, with- Well, that's excellent to hear. Because yeah. like a lot of people can get really upset by editors and things like that and- Sure, um, sure. With, so with X-Men being earlier in your screenwriting career, yeah. how difficult did you find it to stay true to that source material? Or like, what was your muse, if you will, yep. that allowed you to want to write that? Well, the, my muse was Chris Claremont. Okay. Um, so Chris Claremont is a legendary X-Men writer um, who was writing in the 80s, the early 80s, and that's where I became a fan. And, yep. and so my goal it was different from Watchmen. Watchmen is just like directly adapting a book. Well, yeah, because it was, was just that one book. Right, I was right. condensing like 40 years of X-Men comic books. Um, but a lot of it came from the comics I loved as a kid. Dark sure. Phoenix Saga, yep. Days of Future Past, and you know, like all these incredible stories that he had put together. So that was the X-Men I was trying to create. Right. And then when we did um, X-Men 2, I started with God Loves, Man Kills, and okay. said this should be the basis for this yeah. movie, and that's and how that came Now up. that you say that, I can see that. Yeah, you can see it. It's, so, well, Stryker was a, sure. was, a, was a preacher, crazy preacher, who wanted to kill mutants, yep. um, and basically the story was that he kidnapped, um, brainwashed Professor Xavier, 
put him in a cerebro machine that would kill all the mutants in the world. And right. same, uh, same basic. Yeah, story. a lot of that followed, um, like even the '90s uh, cartoon as well. Like that's oh, yeah. kind of. I never really saw the cartoon. Yeah, but I, was but, I mean, those are the, those are the great stories. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and um, so, uh, but so yeah, and then William Stryker changed from being the preacher to being the guy who put the adamantium in Wolverine just to tie it close to Wolverine. Right. And that's how it kind of came together. But nice. um, yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, we do have about two minutes left, so I mean, if there is any other questions, please feel free. Uh, yes. So, um, I don't know if you've ever watched Death Battle on YouTube, but uh, Solid Snake okay. does fight Sam Fisher in that, and they oh, yeah. predict a winner, so How'd I'm going to spoil it for you. Okay. <laughs> but it is out there, just, just so you know. Yeah, I think I saw one where Snake fought Ezio. And I got to introduce the video, so Snake won. Okay, good. <laughs> that was in my contract. I saw a video where you fought a crab once. Crab battle. <laughs> that's, that's all I want. Crab battle. <laughs> you in the back there. What were my thoughts on the cardboard box? I just feel more comfortable in the box. <laughs> it's pretty comfortable. You should try it. Sir. Um, so you would say that you know a good bit about the Metal Gear, like, total storyline, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you could change any part of the overall Metal Gear story, would, what would you change, if any? I, I would change uh, the middle part. Oh, okay. Next one. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, sorry. Um, red shirt. Red shirt. That's yeah. you. Oh, okay. No, blue shirt behind you. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. What's up? How do you feel about monster hunting? I enjoy it. I'm sorry, I don't know the reference. I would say something so, amusing. Metal Gear but... Solid Peace Walker. Oh, did I talk about monster hunting? Well, then I, I feel very positively about it. Nice. <laughs> you in the back there. Yeah, it's actually my brother trying to ask, but he's too shy. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is sort of like a non disclosure kind of thing. Uh, what, are the, what is the status on the codex for Smash Ultimate? Uh, well, uh, it's not a very satisfying answer. They're using the codex that they recorded for the original Smash. And I offered to Nintendo to do the rest of them, but I didn't really hear back. Um, so I keep talking about it at Comic Cons, <laughs> again, in the hopes that it will guilt them into bringing me back to do it. But uh, yeah, yeah, thank there you. There you go. Guys, we are all out of time right now. Um, we're getting the wrap up sign here. Yep. So thank let's you go so, ahead. so much, guys. I really appreciate it. This was really fun. Everyone's David Hayter.